gentleman from New York, Ms. Ocasio-Cortez is recognized for five minutes. Thank you so much, Chairman, um, and for hosting such a critically important hearing. Uh, so last year, I just want to dive in. <laughs> last year in 2021, um, the New York City Department of Homeless Services counted over 100,000 homeless individuals who slept in our shelter system. This number also included over 30,000 homeless children. Meanwhile, just this past week, the New York Times uh, reported that Huntington, New York, which is an affluent commuter neighborhood uh, that's just a train ride away from my district, approved construction of just 146 subsidized homes after 40 years of fighting for its approval. So it took 40 years uh, for Huntington to approve just 146 subsidized homes in the region. And by one estimate that the article cited, our region needs to add about uh, over 700,000 homes for lower income households. So, you know, this, juxtap uh, this juxtaposition tells us so much about what we need to know about our housing crisis, that the reason why people uh, are on the streets isn't just some elusive housing or market phenomenon. It's also because we've chosen not to build. Um, but Mrs. Wagner, I wanted to begin by discussing how it is that a town like Huntington could get away with refusing to build 146 houses for 40 years. Um, and would it be right to say that our completely decentralized system of zoning regulation has allowed for something like this to happen? Well, first of all, I really share your concern about the lack of affordable housing uh, options in places like Huntington and in so many other communities nationwide where they work but can't afford to live. And the federal government should really incentivize state and local jurisdictions to ease land use zoning restrictions that contribute to housing supply and the affordability issues, which you mentioned. So the fact that it took 40 years to build something tells me that the land is locked and there's no inclusionary zoning and that the, the city is not contemplating how working people are housed in the community. And so you really need to incentivize um, local um, participation in improving and easing zoning restrictions. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, I appreciate you kind of bringing in alternative models as well. Uh, we've seen other countries really, uh, federal governments proactively getting involved in regulated uh, housing in other countries, including through things like fiscal zoning in Germany. Um, jurisdictions around the world have turned to a widely lauded model of social housing, which redefines housing as a public good, just like mass transportation, libraries, and schools. In fact, in cities like Vienna and Austria, 40% of the housing stock is currently publicly owned social housing. Uh, Mr. Nowak, could you help draw a picture of what social housing would look like in the United States in terms of available availability and affordability, building management, housing quality, or what it looks like currently in places that have implemented it? Sure, Congresswoman, thank you. Um, I'd like to point an example that's uh, called Scholar House. Um, it's been implemented within the state of Ohio and Kentucky, and we'll be breaking ground on our first Scholar House here in Cuyahoga County here this May. Um, you know, the, it's a real uh, partnership between the federal government as well as the as well as the local government and a number of our private institutions. So when we look at it, we bring in the we, we the Scholar House model is intended to eliminate barriers for parents to be able to finish college, empowering them and their families to have that economic mobility that we hope that uh, that housing can have as well as taking a two generational approach to make sure that our, that the children within the property are getting that, that kind of head start, right? So we use the low income housing tax credit. Um, we use the home investment partnership, um, which some of you may be familiar with. Um, you know, we also use project-based vouchers as well as, uh, as well as Head Start. And by having an integrated approach and layering these different uh, federal and, uh, and also local resources to support our services, we're able to provide uh, this economic mobility that's seen families and other, and other prop similar properties seeing an 86% um, you know, uh, kind of increase in economic mobility. And Mr. Nowak, if, please correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, but in this type of model, it's 
these type of properties are publicly owned. Residents, however, democratically control them. And they're also available to people of all incomes and just people of higher incomes pay market rents. Is that correct? In, in, uh, in, in the social housing model that you uh, that you laid out, uh, Congressman, yes. Um, you know, it, within our scholar house model, which we developed through the locally housing tax credit, um, we do have income limitations, but there are, there are similar models to what you have said, um, you know, that we've seen here uh, across the United States. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.